Welcome to the Make Vegas Pay podcast presented by MVP Consulting. It's Wednesday, January 18th, and we are going to cover cover a couple of topics here in episode two, starting with a couple of leans that we have for the NFL divisional round this upcoming weekend. The guys from MVP will be in Vegas, so we'll talk about that a little bit more later. We also are going to recap some of our picks from the NFL Super Wild Card Weekend. But before we get into all that, just some overall thoughts about this weekend. I was at a wedding this weekend. They didn't have the games on any TV. I missed out on watching the Niners crush the Seahawks and the um, Jacksonville Jaguars complete the greatest comeback in NFL playoff history, I guess, aside from Brady's comeback. But, Swice, your overall thoughts of the Super uh, of the NFL Super Wild Card slate. Uh, very stressful for Brandon and I. It was a long weekend. I mean, the NFL literally schedules games on top of each other, which is super annoying, especially Sunday, that Vikings game, starting with the Bills kind of at the same time. Um, but a good, I mean, Monday night sucked. The Jags Chargers game, that was wild. Brandon, we'll talk more about that game in a little bit here. But uh, I'm, I'm excited for the division. I'll love the teams that are in it and all great matchups. And yeah, we'll be in Vegas. So getting to see the best weekend of football, in my opinion, of the year. Blay, your thoughts on this weekend? A weird football season continues into the playoffs. What in the hell did we just watch? We just watched Tom Brady lose by what? 21 points? It was, I think it was 17. 17 to Dak Prescott in the playoffs. He almost backdoor covered that 15 and a half. <laughs> we just watched a team blow a 27 point lead in a playoff game. What is happening? What is going on in the NFL? Well, it'll straighten out this weekend. Oh, my God. It was insane. The Jaguars game, I have anxiety. I have PTSD anxiety from that. It was like, what, what is going on? How do you blow a 27-point lead, Brendan Staley? How, how does the Bills win by three against the third-string quarterback? That's fucking embarrassing. Oh, my God. What a week, bro. Can we just get a normal week of playoffs? That's all I want. So that's what Brandon wants. He wants a normal week of playoffs. Simon, what are you looking forward to in the divisional round? I uh, love the divisional round because, one, it's only four games and they're only over two days. Um, but, two, uh, uh, some road dogs. A lot of dogs this week that are – two of them are in the sweet spot for underdogs. And we only had small dogs last week. So, away teams that are dogs, we see barking this weekend for sure. Probably two of them. It's just so wild because, you know, I know you're looking forward to those things. But this weekend, you know, I'm really not looking forward to watching any – Burger King commercials. They, they are going to be banned from my TV. Did we do an over-under from last weekend? You guys check in on that? It smashed. Because the over definitely hit. The over smashed. I don't know what it is. Their marketing budget is insane. Where are they getting these dollars from? Who is going to Burger well, King? Well, they ripped us off because they didn't give us pies two weeks ago. So I guess from their consumers that they don't give full meals to. <laughs> Where are they getting these dollars to run in the middle of the fucking NFL playoffs like six times in one game? They've been doing it all season. This is, I don't know. It's we'll, like mattress whatever. firm. No one's going to the store, people. Where are they getting this money? Our, this wor is... our worst week of betting was because we had Burger King that week. Burger King is secretly owned by like the Illuminati. This is where they launder their money through. We don't like Burger King. Burger King sucks. Yeah, it's it's more expensive to what buy a dozen eggs than it is to get uh, a Whopper from Burger King <laughs> and like an, another sandwich with that. It's crazy. <laughs> but uh, let's let's jump into uh, an NFL Super Wild Card Weekend recap here. Again, we're talking about how crazy some of these games are. Um, let's start in Jacksonville, right there. Jacksonville won thirty-one to thirty against the Chargers. Um, fire Brandon Staley. What are your guys? Uh, what are you guys feeling about that game? This game said so much more about the Chargers than it did the Jags. Is the Jags comeback impressive? Yes. Should that comeback have been possible? No. There's not enough possessions in the game. I mean, he had like eight runs in the second half. This is just totally Brandon Staley's fault, and I don't so know why bad. they fired the OC and the quarterbacks coach. Everybody other than him, they fired. Herbert was unstoppable on second and 10. He converted a lot. It's, even in the second half, he wasn't that bad. What I don't understand is how do you go into a, how do you go into a second half of football? 27-7, right? Yeah. 27-7. They scored seven. right before the half to get that. And they um, have the opening possession in that half. If you simply run the ball half as many times as you throw it, 
there was not enough time for them to, to to even have a chance at this game. That was a complete mismanagement on Brandon Staley's end. He's got to go. You've got to fire him, and you get a real coach like Sean, Sean Payton. Payton. Sean Payton for sure. Somebody that somebody that knows how to manage a game. I mean, he has the worst game management skills I've ever seen. It's embarrassing. If you're a Chargers fan, how can you root for this team? How can you continue to have a team this talented and just lose, lose, lose? Like, come on, guys. Brandon took all the words needed there. Fire Brandon Staley. He's a moron. We were talking about it before the game. We've been talking about it all season. I don't know why he played his starters that week and Mike Williams was out. Could have been the difference, but that's 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 the Brandon it said it all for the game. We watched all the games together, and that game uh, was just rewarding for us to hit the Jaguars bet at the end. Imagine if I told you before the game that Jacksonville was going to come out and throw four interceptions in the first half and fumble the ball, recovered by L.A. Five turnovers. Blowout. Would have said 20-point game. I, I, I can't even – I don't even know what to say. I mean, it's such a it, – it says so much about the Chargers. It says so much about their coaching staff. Like, a it, it complete meltdown by Brandon Staley. Complete meltdown. Yeah, so I'm watching this game uh, at my buddy's wedding this weekend. Looking at the score on my phone, it's halftime. Also, who schedules like, oh, a wedding to seven. during wild card? What's that? One of the best wild card comebacks ever. Who schedules a wedding during that time? Shake my head at whoever did that. Subtle shots. Yeah, it, subtle it's shots. a little tough, but uh, subtle shots, I guess you're throwing. He might be <laughs> listening, so watch out. That's fine. But it's so crazy. I look at the score, and I'm like, man, I'm like, this game's over. I could just sit here, drink, and just have fun here at the wedding, enjoy my time. Psych. And then, like, with, like, a minute left, they're like, oh, the Jaguars are coming down the field, and they're ready to hit this field goal to win it. And I'm like, no way this is happening right now. So, again, crazy game, crazy way to start. But let's move on to the game that uh, was actually right before the Jacksonville game. The Seattle Seahawks at the 49ers. 49ers crushed them 41-23. to Fellas, your thoughts on this game? First half was a lot closer than we thought. Um, Seattle was the sharp play. We kind of held off, took 49ers 1-9, to winning margin just transparently. Um, but, yeah, I mean, Brock Party looks legit outside of Daniel Jones, probably the number two quarterback. Excited to see him in the next round, but... Seattle had a good year, just frustrating that they couldn't keep that game close and just got demolished. Also, we had what was what was the player prop? What did we have George Kittle anytime touchdown, like everybody scored on the team, but George Everyone Kittle. Everyone scored but George Kittle. Unbelievable. Brutal. So that's my thoughts on that game. I think you see the versatility of of the uh, 49ers. They can they can beat you with Shanahan designed run plays. They have two good running backs, a solid run blocking offensive line. They have a bunch of I mean they have Look, I mean, look, look at their weapons. Brandon Ayuk, who was phenomenal. Debo Samuel, George Kittle, McCaffrey out of the backfield. Kyle Juszczyk, the best utility fullback in the league. Like, this team has everything that you could want. And they're able to kind of overpower teams, and I think that's what they did in the second half against Seattle. They just wear you down. And I, eventually— That Bosa strip sack that you called, bro. Yeah, I, I called a Bosa strip sack about one second before it happened. It was crazy. But I think— that's what's going to make next week's matchup with Dallas so interesting because they both kind of do the same thing. They just wear you down, and they can do that because they can run the ball, and they have the best run scheme in the league. They have the best run scheme designer of all time in Shanahan. So, And a hell of a running back now. It's going to be interesting. I didn't think uh, – I thought it would be kind of like Georgia TCU. I thought the Niners would, would kind of run all over the, the Seahawks, who are a little more finesse. Purdy had a couple missed throws. He's kind of – he worried me a little bit. He's – uh I think he had some nerves at the beginning. Yeah, I think we're going to see how good Brock Purdy is this week because I think he's going to be playing out of structure. So I think Micah Parsons is going to get pressure whenever he – he like, it's Micah Parsons, dude. He's probably the best pass rusher in the league right now. So we're going to see how good Brock Purdy is out of a Shanahan structure on third and eight when he has to make plays to keep the drive alive. Let's see if he can do it. Like this, will, Everyone wants to say that Brock Purdy is the next Tom Brady. We'll see against Dallas. Absolutely. And I mean, look, Brock Purdy goes from being mystery relevant to Mr. Relevant uh, in these playoffs. We'll have to see how he does against Dallas. Moving on to the next uh, recap here. Uh, Miami at Buffalo. We thought this was going to be a blowout here. Ended up only being a three point game with Skylar Thompson under center. Uh, fellas, what, what are your initial feelings on this game here? Well, it should have been Pittsburgh. And I think we both agree of that. But Miami put up a hell of a fight. Uh, McDaniel had a coaching error at the end. I believe he thought it was uh, first down, not a fourth and one. So 
uh, Mike McDaniel there. But the Bills, I mean, I have them in my Super Bowl. We did this last week against the Niners, but I was not impressed. Um, turnovers, the amount of points they allowed to a third string. They had a huge lead and blew that. Um, just looked undisciplined at times. And, yeah, I, I'm, I'm worried about them a bit going to the Super Bowl after that performance against the third string quarterback who should had no reason to be in that game. Very similar to uh, Jacksonville Chargers. I think this game says a lot more about Buffalo than it does Miami. Miami, I don't think Miami is that good. And I just saw them torch Buffalo's defense. Buffalo's defense is not good, guys. There's this narrative that Buffalo's defense is good. They're not that good. You've got Micah Hyde out, Von Miller out, Kyrie Elam. Micah might be back this week. He might be returning, but he would he tear his ACL? I don't know, but I'll just read a major injury, injury report. So he might be back, but he's not going to be at hundred percent. Obviously, they lost Hamlin, the rookie corner Elam, who's really good. He's banged up. I think this is gonna. I think this is uh, exactly what the the Bengals wanted to see on film. Exactly how to exploit Buffalo's defense. Buffalo, their best pass rusher is what Greg Rousseau right now. Cincinnati gonna eat that up, man. We gotta put some respect on Cincinnati. But uh, not a good showing by Buffalo. They got absolutely torched. Jalen Waddle, Tyreek Hill, they torch everybody, but that's not what you want to see in the playoffs, especially now that you got Tredavious White back. Well, Dre, I'm going to get right into that Cincy-Baltimore game since we're already talking about Cincy. I mean, you almost lose on the last possession against Tyler Huntley, like, at home. I don't, they, I'm they. i worried about them, too. So, I mean, obviously one of them is going to win, but Baltimore is a well-coached team. Huntley looked pretty darn good. Lamar... Screw him for not playing in that game and all the situations no. he, he's put them in this year. Um, I I just don't like the way he kind of handled the whole situation. But uh, Baltimore coached well. They'll be back. And Cincinnati we'll talk more about when we preview the Bills game. Yeah, I think since – Well, it, Simon – oh, well, go, go ahead, Blay. I mean, I, I don't know if it's all Lamar's fault. Yeah, we gotta, we're go definitely going to talk about that. Cincinnati – Cincinnati um, – they almost lost to Tyler Huntley. I mean, they got really lucky. They were almost down a possession in the fourth quarter. And that's in the playoffs, anything could happen. I think that was coaching. I think they have Harbaugh, who's obviously been in the playoffs just about every year. And he's won a lot of big playoff games. And Zach Taylor's not that great of a coach, in my opinion. Um, so that was a huge coaching mismatch. But the Bengals pull it out. They always find a way to pull it out. Joe Burrow has what's Joe what's Joe Cool's record in the playoffs now? Five and one. I don't know. It's pretty darn good. It's pretty good. He's really good under pressure. When it matters, Joe Burrow delivers. It was never the Ravens. The season was going to end the next week. They don't have any chance at a Super Bowl. But we got to talk about this Lamar Jackson take, man. Lamar's fault. What? They didn't pay. They're not going to pay the man. They got to pay the man. I don't like the way he handled the situation. That's that's all. I mean, we could talk about it more during the off season, but I mean, he's gonna leave. But that's I. I don't want to get too much into it. Wonder where Lamar goes. I mean, look, you, you got to look at it like this. If if they paid the man, he maybe the season would have gone a little bit different. But you can't bring him back and rush him back from injuries. Look at what happened to RG three when he got rushed back and then completely lost the rest of his career. Lamar still has a lot of time. He's just as old as Stenson Bennett, who's just graduating from Georgia. Exactly. So he's got plenty of time in the league. He needs to stay healthy, especially if he's going to be a mobile quarterback. But I do need to talk about that 98-yard uh, fumble six that happened. Oh that was God. an insane play. Sam Hubbard running the ball back. I don't even think he needed some oxygen after that play. I can't believe a defensive lineman. He's probably 270, 280 pounds. Mark, I can't, he ran by Mark Andrews on that yeah, one. Yeah, that man that man was not not scoring on that He's play. He's a bad man. That's a bad man. That ain't even Trey Hendrickson. That was what, Sam Hubbard? Yeah. That's a bad man. That's that's like an iconic play in Cincinnati Bengals playoff history. I mean, he, he basically won them the game, essentially. Yeah, I mean they were about to be down seven. Yeah, that ex game changer. One of the best plays I've seen in the postseason, just because it was ninety nine yards and it was a defensive player. You don't you don't see that every day. I don't know why Tyler Huntley tried to at six foot one or six foot. He might even be five eleven. I don't know how tall this guy is. It's not very tall. I don't know why he guys to jump over instead of going down low and easily getting in. I don't know. <sighs> very sus. But the Ravens do cover eight and a half. Was it eight and a half? I think it ended eight at eight and, and, half. and a half. Yeah. Ravens cover the spread. That was the sharp play. So there's one for the good guys. Yeah, that was big right there. I mean, a big return by the big man. 
But speaking of big things, and we're talking about the Giants now and, and the Vikings, I mean, we called what that a last game week. Here. We were very adamant about the Giants on this show. Yeah, we see Danny Dimes going up against, you know, uh, Kirk Cousins, who wasn't looking too good, looking to check the ball down at the end of the game, was selling a little bit there. But, fellas, I mean, what are your thoughts from this game? This was definitely one of the more exciting games from this weekend. Well, I grew up in I grew up in New Jersey, and, uh, yeah, I hated the Giants growing up. But the New York football Giants, man, got Brian Dayball, uh, Wink Martindale, Daniel Jones out here looking like an all-pro. Their game plan was much better on the road. Um, their defense, especially the line there, looked fantastic. Uh, we'll talk more about that matchup with the Eagles, but loved what I saw from them and truly shows how coaching matters, even if it's a rookie coach, um, and how important a defensive coordinator is with an offensive coach. But absolutely loved what I saw from them, even though I hate hate the team. Um, that was a hell of a performance. Let's put some respect on Brian Dayball. He looks this, like a firefighter, kind of. <laughs> he looks like a firefighter. This man is a top. He's a top five coach in the NFL. I mean, can you? Their receivers are. He's a top five <laughs> coach in the NFL. Am I crazy? Who I'll would match. You have? I'll Zach, match on that. Zach Taylor? No. Fuck no. Who, like, let's go through these playoff playoff coaches. Nick Sirianni? No. I would go Harbaugh. I would go Andy Reid, yeah. Shanahan. Then Dayball. Uh, probably then Dayball left. I'm looking at the first round here. Uh, I mean, you've got Doug somebody Peterson. missed the, somebody who, missed the who's playoffs. the coach of the Jags? Um, Doug, uh, yeah, Doug he's Peterson. Doug Peterson. I mean, obviously Belichick's still in the league, but in terms of the playoffs, yeah, he's one of the top ones. He's better than McDermott, in my opinion, and Zach Taylor, and Peterson. I mean, yeah, Dayball is impressive because he's making Daniel Jones look like a franchise quarterback. Daniel Jones is probably not a franchise quarterback, but with Brian Dayball, it's a different story. We saw Dayball in Buffalo turn Josh Allen from a liability. Remember, a lot of people don't remember this. The first two years of Josh Allen's careers, of his career, people were thinking, thinking he was a bust. Like he was holding Buffalo back, right? Dayball, the, uh, he's the OC. He gets it turned around. Josh Allen turns into a top three quarterback. I think you are seeing Daniel Jones elevate his level of play to a top 10 quarterback in the, in the league. If well, he look has, at this receiving core. I mean, you got to give the man some props. Yes, it's Dayball, but. That receiving, I mean, who the hell was Hodgins and you know some of these other? No that tight is end. impressive. No tight end. It's all it's all the scheme. Their defense is is, you know, they play better than they actually are, which is great. It means they're well coached. But I, I was impressed by New York. Daniel Jones was had the best performance out of a quarterback, including Trevor Lawrence. Agreed. Last week, I mean, the man torched Minnesota. I mean, he torched Minnesota. Kirk Cousins sucks. Kirk Cousins is a Toyota Camry. When you need a fucking be like when you need a, a Lamborghini, right? But it wasn't Kirk Cousins' fault completely. It was Minnesota's defense that really let Minnesota down. But that was because of Daniel Jones, man. He was running all over him. He had a hundred rushing yards in the first half. Yeah, that that was That's crazy. Crazy. And of course, they don't cover the one to six, which killed me. I was saying that on this show last week. They covered one to nine or one to ten, whatever you get it at, but. Um, props to the Giants, just overall. I think we're both impressed with them, but we'll talk more about it when we get into the Eagles. Game. Really like the Giants. Really like the Giants, and I like what I saw. Yeah, definitely a great game there. Uh, moving on to the next one here. We had the Cowboys versus the Buccaneers <laughs> on Monday Night Football. What the um, fuck was that? Wow. Excuse my language, but that god damn. terrible, man. I couldn't even watch that shit. We got them, thir- we got them in a 13-point teaser. Tom Brady is not going to cover 15 and a half points in the playoffs. What are we doing here? What are we doing here? And he has a chance at the end of the game to cover the 15 and a half backdoor. And what that does he do? That was insane. Brady, I was literally driving home from the bar. Brandon's like, he's going to get it. I was like, no way. And they're I, fucking driving. I said this. I said, if Dallas goes up 14 to zero, or in this case, 12 zero, we got to talk about those missed extra points. Good God. Dallas goes up two scores. I said, Tampa Bay is not going to be able to climb back into this because Brady— You wanted to take him at 14 and a half, bro, Tampa. I, that that was the Tom Brady nostalgia in me, wanting, like, no way Brady can't make this close, right? I thought they could cover two scores. But I did say, I said, if Dallas goes up two possessions and they're just in sync and they're moving the ball, it's over. Because Tampa Bay does not have the ability to score in six plays anymore. Maybe last year, not this year. 
So, and my, you saw Michael Parsons. Oh, my God. He's a dog. He's, he's an animal. There's no blocking Michael Parsons. He was on Brady's ass all night. Brady has no time to throw the ball. You see, a, I mean, I've never seen Tom Brady play. I mean, I've seen him play really bad this season. That playoff game last uh, last Monday against Dallas, rough. Rough, rough, rough. Worst game, maybe the worst game I've ever seen Brady play. Yeah, that was that was brutal. I mean, got to give Dallas some props though. They got blown out the week before, and teams that usually get blown out the week before have a good performance uh, after the fact. But we'll talk more about that with the with the Niners game. Dak was impressive. Yeah, absolutely. I uh, look. I mean, the only player on the field that played worse than Tom Brady had to be the kicker, Brett Maher, just missing four extra points. Really moving the point spread around, um, yeah. I mean, Blay just overall four missed extra points. What kind of conspiracies, you know, do you come up with when All you're right. looking at oh, stuff God. like the that? The spreads at forty five. The spreads at forty five, or excuse me, the over unders at forty five and a half. This man makes one of those four extra points. The over, which the public was on, the over. Public's always on the over, but the public was over. I was definitely on the over in this game. Well, every single game I hit the over before this one. Yeah, it, it's like they're they're building this up. It's like, oh, it's got to be the over. It's got to be the over. It got to be the over. This man misses four extra points to cash the under at forty five on a forty five and a half point over under. That's a bad beat. That's terrible. But it was very. It weird. is terrible. You saw Mike Evans drop a. A wide open touchdown that Mike Evans never drops. That would have cashed the over. Yeah, well, that would have hit weird. our stuff too. So I don't want to talk about this game. It's it's, yeah, it's miserable I, to I think hate, about. It's miserable to think about this game. This game, this game sucked. It it is tough. So one last thing I did want to mention from this game, a little shying away from the game, but still part of the topic. Do we think Tom Brady's going to retire this offseason? Absolutely not. Definitely not. Yeah, he'll be back. I think he he's not going to play for Tampa Bay. Not with no, t- not for Todd it's like Holmes. Raiders or, or Niners, maybe one of those two. Is Brady the? Who, who do you guys think he'll play for? I think the the depends it, how far the Niners go. It depends what they think of Brock Purdy. I think Trey Lance is already done. I think if Brock Purdy wins another playoff game, they're gonna rock with Brock Purdy next year. Well, then he'll go to then he'll go to Vegas. I think either the the Raiders make a lot of sense. They have Josh McDaniels, they have Devontae Adams. It's a big market for him. Hunter Renfro, Darren Waller, Josh Jacobs. They got weapons. They just gotta get the defense right. Miami, obviously, to his career might be over. Yeah. It could I, very easily be over. Miami's got the weapons, but a team that no one's talking about. Tennessee's a sleeper team, but the team that no one's talking about. Going back to New England. For one last mm, run, I don't see that happening. One last run, they get Kings. Maybe they get Cliff, Cliff Kingsbury as the OC. They bring Cliff back Cliff Kingsbury is out here in Thailand, bro. That man is chilling for a couple of months. I I'm telling you right <laughs> now, the NFL would love nothing more than for Tom Brady to come back to the New England Patriots with those receivers, bro. To, he ain't coming back to that they're shit. They're not that bad. They're not that. Oh, bad. Co- they're Monte skill position. Come on, they're not that bad. Jacoby Myers. They're like the Giants level receivers. No, they're better. Isaiah Hodgins. Who the Two hell good is that guy? Listen, Darius Slayton. No, ah, some of these receiving cores if get better. Brady people. comes back to New England. The NFL would love nothing more than to see Belichick and Brady make one last run at the Super Bowl. You heard it here first. If not gonna happen, I, I'm saying if it, it we'll could make happen. a bet. We'll make a bet on this before that. We'll, we'll think of something. Just remember, you heard it here first. Brady. And Tom, or Tom Brady, Bill Belichick, retirement tour. You heard it here first, folks. It's a possibility. You heard it here first. Well, that covers our recap of the NFL Super Wild Card Weekend. A couple of crazy games. We have more games coming up. But before we do get into some of the divisional picks and leans that we have, you are listening to the Make Vegas Pay podcast presented by MVP Consulting. And if you guys haven't known already, We do specialize in providing detailed picks with analysis and expert recommendations. We have access to a Telegram group where we uh, spur up uh, discussion about sports betting and also access to an exclusive Telegram group with VIP support. And you'll have access to in-house sports bettors here with premium picks and early recommendations and analysis throughout the week only at Make Vegas Pay and at MVP Consulting. So, Moving on into the divisional round here, 
very exciting games that we have going on. In the NFC, we have the Giants versus the Eagles, Cowboys versus the Niners. In the AFC, we're looking at the Jaguars Chiefs and the Bengals Bills. But let's start here in Philadelphia um, with the Giants versus the Eagles. They're playing on Saturday, prime time. Right now, the opening line was Philadelphia minus seven and a half, and the over-under opened at 47. Currently, right now, the odds are at uh, – the Eagles are still at minus seven and a half, but the over-under moved to 48. So, fellas, what are you guys thinking about this game? I would say my initial lean, based off what you just said, would be New York plus seven and a half um, and the under at 48 divisional rival uh, playoff game cold weather I love the under there I st- I'm gonna like the under regardless yeah I mean Jones was in a down like he's gonna yeah. look a little bit worse than that against a much better defense <laughs> it basically comes down to man man I want to say the Giants are gonna come out and win this game I want the Giants to win this game but if you look at these two teams there's more one team has a lot more talent than the other team maybe New York covers seven and a half but I think I think Philadelphia just is too good. I think Philadelphia is just too good. To, I think they win 27-17, and it's a close game throughout. But there's just, Philly has just too much firepower. They have two number one receivers. They have a great tight end. What, what do you want me to say? I mean, they're, they have too much talent to, to lose this game. I don't Could think they, they're coached very well. Uh, Sirianni is a part of that new wave of – Finesse, you know, finesse Zach, Zach, uh, Zach, uh, Taylor, yeah, Zach Taylor, excuse me, uh, Matt LaFleur, people like that. I, I think the Giants have the coaching advantage, but there's just too much talent. Philadelphia's got two elite corners, they're getting a lot of pass rushers back. This is not a good matchup for uh, New York, really, on paper, yeah. I mean, I, I agree. Um, just a, a fact here that I came across. Uh, road teams that are underdogs, three plus three and a half to nine and a half in the playoffs have gone 24, 14, and one against the spread, so 63% there. So I do agree with you getting that hook of the seven and a half is good. Um, but, I mean, I think they have a coaching match, like advantage with Wink and Dayball there. Um, they've lost them twice, and they played against each other the last like six weeks, and they actually played pretty well with their third string guys in. So, I mean, I think the Giants can upset them, yeah. Um, I, what I saw from, like, Danny Dimes, it will be outside, I know. Their the game plan should be a little different, maybe more run-heavy. Um, but another kind of note here, I don't think Brandon knows yet about the refs. Cleet Blakeman is doing this game. Uh, home teams are 49 and 49 straight up with Blakeman the past six years. So, average. And then he also... Uh, in 2021, had the not this past season, the season before, had the most offensive holding penalties. So just interesting. Not sure who you think that favors more, the Eagles or the uh, Giants. I would say that favors the Giants. Philadelphia um, runs the ball like crazy. They run between the tackles. I think they have an opportunity to have more holding calls. The runs that the Giants run that are kind of backbreaking are the Daniel Jones runs, and I don't. There's not a lot of opportunity for hold, holding there because he's he's really get he's if he's running a read option he's getting away from the yeah. line of scrimmage so there's not a lot there i i, I mean i it's so, it's so hard i really want to pick the giants here but it just really comes and down the, and the eagles are great first half team too it comes down to the health of jalen hurts how healthy is he we think he's healthy i mean that's what they're saying but if he's 60 percent or 70 percent, that changes things if he's 90 85 90 percent plus I don't really see Philadelphia losing this game. What about the th- three times in a row? That's very difficult to do. I think Dayball's going to come out with a great game plan, and I, I don't know. We'll, we'll we'll see how they do in the first half for me to warrant it money line, but I know we both love the, the spread at 7.5. It's a, it's, a, it's a hook number. It's a divisional game. They got blown out a couple weeks ago, and they played each other now multiple times, so I just think... Um, and the Giants basically got a bye week when they played the Eagles. They won- they lost by six with Davis Webb, and I don't even know who else was starting. So that kind of helps with their depth and getting some guys that usually don't play in case of injuries or you, know, you want to throw somebody out there on special teams. They did get extra time there. Yeah, I think uh, that basically sums it up. I mean, I, I would 
I would lean New York on the spread. I don't really have a, a hard opinion there. I'm not taking a seven and a half of home favorite in the divisional. This Giants will keep it close. I, I think the Eagles win this game, and I'm going to say they win it 26 to 26 17. 26 17 sounds like a good. So, number. would you rather take the Eagles one to ten winning margin? Then the Giants plus seven and a half, and then take the Giants money line live. I, I'd probably have to live bet this game. I would probably tease New York um, to plus thirteen and a half. Yeah, that seems that seems pretty. I safe. think that's the good play in this game. If you can get a thirteen point teaser, you can tease the Giants to twenty and a half, which is absurd. Well, um, we said that about Tampa, and then they didn't. So I, I don't think it would be that absurd with the, with the talent discrepancy in this game. There is a huge talent discrepancy, but the coaching I think keeps it a lot closer. Yeah, better coaching than the Bucks. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, well, absolutely. That's, so it looks like the lean on the there <laughs> it is definitely on the under here. We got Danny Dimes going up against Jalen Hurts, and it's going to come down to whether Jalen is healthy or not. But you know, coming into the playoffs, a lot of people were talking about, oh, this Giants team looks like one of those teams uh, that won the Super Bowl, that won on those runs. So you know, a lot can happen, and it, you know, things could get spicy in that game. But let's move over to the AFC right now. Let's talk Ooh, about the spicy. Jacksonville Jaguars. <laughs> playing in Kansas City against the Chiefs, uh, who are coming off that bye week. Uh, the opening line was Kansas City minus 9, and the over-under opened at 52. Currently, the uh, line stand at uh, Kansas City at minus 8.5, and, and the over-under is at 53. Yeah. Uh, I'll start here with the over-under. Uh, Sean Hockley, who we've bet on many times. Big fi- under, right? 57% in his career to the under. Nice. A little more for divisional games. Uh, my, I have very strong thoughts on this game, so I'm just going to go through this very rapidly. The Jaguars had two first-half deficits um, the last couple weeks here. Like, against what's Josh Dobbs and then against a terrible coach. Like, huge deficits at home. Yes, they came back, but this is completely different. The elite coach and quarterback in Arrowhead, I think he's going to struggle there. Um, They did play each other last time, and it ended up being a close game. But the Jaguars, with their slow starts, like, that's that's not going to work on the road this week, and they're not going to be dealing with the crap quarterback and bad coach. I mean, Josh Dobbs in the first half against the Jags lit them up in terms of, like, completion percentage. Um, Herbert also had a great half. I just don't think they'll be able to turn it around. Could see this getting out of hand, but, I mean, Peterson's a great coach, so we'll see. Trevor Lawrence's first road playoff game is going to be a tough environment, and all of those factors, I think this could get a little bit ugly, like 12 to 14-point win for Kansas City. Look, I want to be a sharp and sit here and tell you that Jacksonville's the play, but they're not. This isn't. This isn't a game that you need to think a lot about. Kansas City is off rest, a week of rest with Andy Reid. They are going to come out here and eviscerate this Jaguars second. What a choice of words there. I haven't heard of that word in a while. Look at her. Look at what Herbert was able to do in the first half. Mahomes is better than Herbert. By Mahomes is the best quarterback in the NFL. Undisputed best quarterback in the NFL. If you don't agree, you don't watch football. <laughs> Mahomes, I'm with you. Mahomes is the best quarterback. I I don't see a world in which the Chiefs lose this game at all. Now, if you told me that Jacksonville came out in the first half and played very well and had a lead, maybe Jaguars after first the half. last two weeks that shit show they ain't coming out like that. I'm sorry I'm on know. the road. I, I, Jags first half money line might be a play here. I think the Jags come out off a ton of momentum, and maybe Kansas City comes out a little flat because they haven't played in a week, and Jacksonville scores first, or Jacksonville... This is a team off the bye with Reed that comes out and play, like, they... Yeah, but they ha- they have a week of... The Jags just... The, the Jaguars just came back from the biggest deficit in the NFL. They're riding high. I think there's a discrepancy in the teams and the talent, but I think it's possible you see Jacksonville come out first and strike first. Maybe Kansas City goes down 14-0. Well, yeah, we've, they're known to do that in the playoffs. But then so you I, see I Kansas City. If let's say Jacksonville scores, you know, fourteen points consecutively, ten zero lead, you you will see Kansas City dominate the second half. You will see Mahomes dominate the second half of football. So Kansas City will advance here. I'm telling you right now, Kansas City. Will I'm advance. I'm with you. And another thing with this um, game here, the home field advantage. I mean, Kansas City is gonna be gonna be rocking there. Um, Wanted to do a player prop, which I don't usually talk about, but Travis Kelsey had not had a touchdown catch since uh, November, which is insane. So it's like minus 145, but I will be throwing significant units on that. I just think they'll score score enough there. 
um, to do that. Although I do like the under in this game, partially because of the ref. I um, think it will be a slower uh, pace than we actually anticipate going into it. Um, kind of like that Titans uh, Jags game, even though the Titans lit him up. I mean, Mahomes will be able to convert, but I think they'll hit the under. I like it especially teased, especially with Sean Hockley rapping. Yeah, we made a lot of money this season teasing Sean Hockley's, uh, <laughs> teasing his unders up. Because his dad was a legend. I think if you're going to take Travis Kelsey. If you're going to take him at – it's ju- it's so juiced for a reason. Yeah, but, bro, he's going to get a touchdown take it, catch. If you're going to take it at minus 140, I think you have to take it at two plus. I think you have to get – you have to take I – would, I would put a unit and a half or 1.4 units on in Travis Kelsey anytime touchdown at minus 140. But I would also sprinkle a half a unit on Travis Kelsey two plus. At, what about first touchdown? I like that too. I like Travis Kelsey. Anything to do with Travis? I don't know Kelsey. how Jacksonville is against the tight ends. I'm just basing this off of it's been November and the best tight end. I believe they're bad. The I believe Jacksonville is bad against tight ends. Look at what oh, J- what's his name? Parham and Gerald and, and, Everett destroyed them. So Kelsey, <laughs> I, look, sprinkle Kelsey anytime touchdown. Sprinkle Kelsey two plus touchdowns. Hell, sprinkle tr- Kelsey three plus touchdowns because he's, t- he's done that it before. That he got so and then many. sprinkle Travis Kelsey to score the first touchdown in this game. Yeah, I was going to, uh, Trace, ask Brandon. Um, we saw a man come play for the J- Chargers named Bandy. I had never seen that guy. I don't know what the conspiracy is there, but who the hell was that guy, and why was he in in the playoffs? NPC player, not a real player. Yeah, Vegas so operative. The, the thing behind <laughs> Bandy, I got the inside scoop on this. Uh-oh. Apparently, whoever was backing up Mike Williams was practicing all that week for the Chargers, right? Uh, but then the guy who was supposed to back up Mike Williams also got injured that week. So... <laughs> probably like the day before they threw this bandy guy on on the roster with no practice time not even practicing those plays and then late in the game staley calls a play for bandy who had no time practicing all week this play so he had no clue the ball was coming to him that's where they fuck it up that and was random that's why they this lost is the not game. a real player this is not a real person what's his first name michael i believe i'm gonna look it up well, somebody look somebody give me this information we should put him up on the uh, <laughs> michael bandy is not a real nfl player he's not a real person uh it is michael bandy i don't even know where he went to college michael bandy does not exist he uh, is 5'10", 190, so the average he's like the same size as me he looks like a patriots receiver he okay. went to san diego for college not a real person <laughs> They don't even have a picture on his Wikipedia, so. Well, I mean, looking at this uh, Jaguars-Chiefs game, I mean, the Jaguars, I agree with Blay, are going to come out hot and early with the momentum that they have. But again, just as any team does, they leave too much time on the clock for Mahomes, and he's going to come back. But here's this one underlying stat about the Jaguars, more specifically Trevor Lawrence. He has never lost on a Saturday in high school, college, or even in the pros. He's lost on Fridays, he's lost on Sundays, but has never lost on a Saturday, even dating to last week. That is going to So, have. can we? I, what, what's going to happen there? I'm so tired of hearing about that shit. Travis, uh, Trevor Lawrence hasn't lost a game in middle school on a Saturday. Do the Jags play Saturday or Sunday? They play on Saturday. Thank God. Thank God. He's done. They're, they're getting eliminated. Look, I love Trevor Lawrence. I think he's a top 10 quarterback. He's, he's really good. He ain't beating the Kansas Not this City year. Chiefs. Not this year. Let's give him some time. A no, couple years down the road. Maybe I mean, next year. There's going to be a surprise team. Maybe they're the surprise team. The Bengals, There's always a Bengals of the playoffs like last All year. All right. Well, the Bengals played the freaking Titans, who were a fraudulent one seed last year. I'm not going to, you know. The they only, play the Raiders in the first round. Let's not get ahead of ourselves on who the Chiefs are versus those teams. The only two teams that fit that description are New York and Jacksonville. One of those teams going to the champion, conference championship. I don't know who it is. It's probably New York. One of, one of most, most likely New York, but since we're talking about you know that Cincinnati Bengals type team, let's get in. Let's stay in the AFC here and get into that matchup. Ooh, been Bengals, waiting for this Bills, one. It's going to be a huge, huge game. 3 p.m. on Sunday. The opening line had Buffalo at minus four, and the over under opened up at 50. Currently, the line stands at Buffalo minus five, and Insane. the over under is at. 48. I don't think half. it's insane. Insane. I, you know, Joe Burrow likes to smoke cigars. Watch. After this game, Joe Burrow is going to be smoking on that Josh Allen pack. I'm telling you right now. There's got. I'm, I'm outraged right now. 
Where is the respect on the Cincinnati Bengals? Five and a You're half. You're not looking at the line right, bro. Five and a half. You, they, Five and a half. The, the Bills have 4.8 true home field advantage. They were favored a couple <sighs> weeks ago in Cincinnati. The, the Bengals' entire offensive line, or three of them, are like injured or out. Eli Apple's injured. I think the Bengals are going to win this game, but the line is set at the right number. Cincinnati is better than Buffalo. This should be. A I think they're going to win, but I think the line is set at the correct number. I don't agree. I think it should be Cincinnati plus three. I think it's absurd. What you're telling me, I can get Cincinnati to plus eleven and a half in a teaser in a divisional round matchup? That's nonsense. That's nonsense. Cincinnati is better than Buffalo. I, th- I think they're going to win. It's I'm just saying the line was set at the right number. I, and I think the public is going to hammer Buffalo. And it, no shit, because of Demar Hamlin. But I don't. I don't. It's not like Joe Burrow's ever had a good offensive line. The Bengals were probably going to beat Buffalo in that Week 18 matchup. Or week seventeen. Yeah, matchup. I think they're gonna win. I'm just. I think Burrow is great against pass rush. The, the here's the here's what's weird. So Buffalo was able to generate pressure when they had Von Miller without blitzing extra. They could send four and get to pr- get pressure. Burrow's, I believe, the best quarterback in the NFL against the blitz. He shreds defenses that blitz him. So Buffalo's def- defenses look bad, and Buffalo or Cincinnati has the weapons to really. Put it on Buffalo. Like, I, I could see Bu- Cincinnati going up 10 in this game. It's not impossible. Yeah, this could be a yo-yo game where there's a bunch of swings here. I actually think the Bengals, I forgot what the money line is. I've, I've, I've seen it at plus 195, plus 180, whatever you want. Absurd. I think it'll reach a hedge point, meaning the Bills will get to plus 100 and become or become the dogs. Um, pretty confident in that. Also, I love this game staying at a field goal. I've been talking about this for weeks, but you can get on FanDuel, you can get Bengals one to five at plus winning margin at plus five hundred and Bills one to five at plus four forty. This game is staying within four, I believe. I would take it at three. Um, I just think the way these two teams play, the offenses, the way the games last week were close. Um, I really like the winning margins of this game. I mean, plus 500, Bengals 1-5? to five? Like, that's that's insane, bro. Like, the Bills are going to keep this close. I think they're going to lose, but they're going to keep this game close. Look, Kansas, uh, uh, Tampa, here is our, here is, Jesus, I can't speak. These are our initial leans. I think we can both agree. If We're you're pretty be- aligned this week. If you're betting on the spread, you're taking Cincinnati plus 5.5. This is a three- or four-point game if they lose. Yeah, it's I It's a agree. field goal game. You're taking the 5 I'd know. rather take Bills one to five at plus four forty if I think they're going to lose because that's just insane value. Yeah. I'll take a money line. Yeah, I mean, oh, this game, I, I'm I can't believe that Cincinnati's not getting any respect. Like, they are getting respect. N- they're a five and a half point dogs, man. They're you not. You got to count for the home. This they're, is the number one home field advantage team by a long shot. Cincinnati is better than Philadelphia, and Philadelphia is minus seven and a half against New York. Again, the 4.8 Cincinnati true home be... field. Buffalo is a different place in the playoffs. Yeah, I'm, I'm telling you. Joe Burrow is going to go to Buffalo. When Let's not forget about their injuries. I know he's played with the line, but uh, like I, I'm with you that they're going to win, but just don't say the line is like wrong. I disagree with the line. I think the line's wrong. I think you're going to see it Well, you're not giving enough credit to home field advantage. because he's. He, they're it, not worth four points. They're pr- probably worth three, and with they're all the Bengals injuries. Two three. Well, the the Bills is four point eight. What about the Bills injuries? Micah Hyde. Von, he's coming back. He's gonna play. If he plays, he's gonna be very limited snap count. They don't have Demar Hamlin. Kyer Elam's hurt. Von Miller's out for the season. Josh Allen has been turning the ball over. If Josh Allen turns the ball over in the red zone in this game one time, Cincinnati's winning this game. And Josh Allen is not very good at managing leads. Oh, excuse me. Uh, Michael Hyde will not play. That's my bad. Even worse. Even worse. So they'll have Dean Marlowe starting at safety for them. At least they're not Michael Bandy. <sighs> Michael Bandy's not real. <laughs> he may be playing for another team this week. He's, he might be working at Mattress Firm this week, dude. Neither neither <laughs> of those things are real fucking people. <laughs> that, uh, <laughs> we might see him in Vegas this Fuck weekend, bro. Dude. If we see Michael Bandy out there, I'm, I'm, I'm getting an autograph. He, he's going to be our bartender. Bro, bro. Bro. Like, we he's 5'10", 190, the exact average height of a male, basically, in weight. Belichick's trying to get this guy on the phone. Belichick's like, I need you in the <laughs> slot right now, catching passes. <laughs> We're talking too much about this guy, but that shit was <laughs> fucking hilarious. <laughs> Michael goddamn Bandy, man. Go look him up if you don't know who he is. You won't find anything because he's not real. <laughs> but anyway, back to this game. Cincinnati, I think they come out and they outright win against Buffalo. 
They'll be barking. I agree with that. If they don't win, they're definitely going to cover, in my opinion. I just don't think Josh Allen is elite yet at getting a lead and maintaining a lead. I mean, he lost Dayball, too. Like, that's the difference for him. Yep. His, his coach is the defensive coach. Yeah, the Bills have looked. It's been interesting. Um, the ref for this game is Carl Sheffers, who we know. Uh, home teams are 60% straight up, but uh, 500 ATS with him, or 50% ATS. So, interesting there. Um, but, yeah, I'm with you on the Bengals. I love Joe Burrow. Uh, Chase is going to have a day, I How think. much are you buying into narratives, though? Buffalo, obviously, is the narrative of the NFL. The Buffalo is going to win the Super Bowl. I mean, I have them in my Super Bowl prediction initially, but after what I saw against Miami, they got a lot to clean up. I think— And bu- Joe Cool, even with that home crowd, can get it going. This is a game where I think there could, this could be a trap. I think you're going to see the public get on one side and the Sharps get on one side and the other side. You're going to see the Sharps on Cincinnati. No Sharp is laying a a five-and-a-half point spread at Buffalo against Cincinnati. That's nonsense. You're going to see the public get on one side and you're going to see the Sharps get on the other. And Vegas with the Sharps. And you're They're ta- gonna, yeah, public's taking Buffalo. And you're gonna Buffalo s- and the over for yeah. sure. If this game over, this game probably going to hit the under. And just you're going to see there. you're going to see Cincinnati win and the under hit, and it's going to be a complete get Well, the back. books didn't make out well with all of these overs this past week. I mean. Oh, look at the lines. They've, they These they lines adjusted, are yeah. huge. These are huge. Like, what is the line? Jacksonville, Kansas City, 52, 51? Yeah, it's, it's high. I mean. I, Jacksonville what, might not score like if it's a dominating game. Jacksonville might not score more than fourteen. Also, what what fan base you think is going to be in Vegas the most when we're there this weekend? I think the Niners. Probably the fucking Raiders, dude. They're crazy. They're not even no, in not the Raiders. I'm saying teams that are like in it. I think the Niners. They travel well there, and we'll see. We'll we'll get some uh, interviews with some with some fans while we're there and get some predictions beforehand. Yeah. It's definitely got to be the Niners. I mean, just being in that area. Uh, and I guess that's a great segue to the next game we can cover here. We've got the Cowboys versus the Niners, the last game in the divisional round Sunday um, at 6.30 p.m. in San Francisco. San Francisco has had about a week of rest here. The Cowboys will have about five days going into this game. The line opened up at San Francisco minus 4.5 and, and the over-under at 45.5. And, and currently the line sits at uh, – 49ers minus three and a half, and the over under at 46. Whoa, so, whoa, whoa. fellas, what are you guys seeing here for this game? You know so who's we, roughing this game? Who's roughing? <laughs> Your boy, Bill Vinovich. Fucking Bill. Under, Vinovich. Mr. Under. I don't know. Man. They can put a, all these under refs that's this a week. low total. That's a really 44 and a half, man. That's a 21 21 ball game. A 24 21. I think the pace is going to slow down a bit. <sighs> Oof. I don't know. I mean, Seattle's D and Tampa's D, these two Ds are, I mean, I think the Cowboys will have a better defense. Pause. Huh? Pause. <laughs> the, the audience <laughs> will get that. <laughs> All right. I but, guess so. So, a little blooper. Um, so, did we get some line movement on that? Did we get um, Did we get the Niners down to three and a half? It was at four. I think it may be. Yeah, so it opened up at four and a half. Now it's down to three and a half Niners. Over under opened up at four forty five and a half, and now it's at just forty six. I'm not going to overthink this game because this is a hard game to handicap. These are the same teams playing each other. And one has a rookie quarterback, and they're at home. They, they offset. One has a rookie quarterback, but he has the superior coach. Correct. Dak is the better quarterback. McCarthy's a bozo. So bozo I, who somehow won a Super Bowl. I don't know how. This game goes to who do you win a Super Bowl with? Green Bay. Yeah. Oh my God, I forgot about that. It counts as much <laughs> as Aaron Rodgers carried his ass. Jesus, I think this game goes two ways. You're gonna see Micah Parsons do what he did to Tom Brady to Brock Purdy. It'll be closer because the Niners have a lot of weapons, but you'll see the the Niners get a chance to tie or win the game in the fourth quarter, and Dallas's defense will step up and make a play against a rookie quarterback, or you will see a team that has way more rest, had a longer rest period. Dallas is Dallas finished playing. They didn't get on the plane until what two o'clock in the morning. They have a two day rest. Two, it's ridiculous. NFL with the stupid Monday night thing is just literally screwing the Cowboys. Right? It is not fair that they have two and a half days basically with the travel and the Niners game finishing in the afternoon Saturday. That is total bullshit. Yeah, that's and that's not good. You heard that here first. Because San Francisco is at home. They don't have to go anywhere. Dallas has to get back on a plane. Then they have to fly all the way to California. And game plan against Kyle Shanahan, who's a yeah. friggin' genius. Yeah, I don't know. 
If you can get the 49ers, if the spread moves to minus three on your book, you take it. You buy the half a point, you take them at two and a half, or you take them at minus three, I think. I, I think the Niners win this game, but there is a world in which Dallas is able to pull this off. But I think that the 49ers do what Dallas does just a little bit better, and they are way better coached, and their defense is – they have two good defenses, but the Niners' defense is the best defense in the NFL. Without question. Yeah, it's going to be interesting with the rest disparity here. Um, just an FYI, last year all of the games were within three, and the only game that wasn't was that Buffalo-Kansas uh, City game. The road dogs you know, did well. We'll see for me if the Giants or Jags upset and then the Bengals win. That'll play. I know it sounds ridiculous, but it'll play a role in this for me. Um, I think it's going to be a real close game here, but I do the rest disadvantage. I think I'll lean Niners, but I think... Dallas covers really close game with a rookie quarterback against an elite, some elite defenders. I mean, like Michael Parsons could be, you know, defensive player of the year. Um, and their coach on defense is like legit. I mean, Dan Quinn's legit. So. D'Amico Ryan's is legit, man. No, I know, but I'm saying McCarthy's an idiot. But like on oh, defense, yeah. the Cowboys are coached well. Yeah, they're they're playing well. They're playing well. But I, I think you're going to see one dog win this week. I think if, if I had. I think two. It's possible. It's definitely possible. But if if I had to like, if I have someone, if I had to tell you right now, life on the line, I gotta pick how many dogs are gonna win. Give me Cincinnati over Buffalo, and then the favorites win out. Kansas City beats Jacksonville. Philadelphia's talent's just a too much, and we both agree that the Niners are better than the Cowboys. That would be my prediction on the face of it. And then I could I could see a world in which New York wins. But that's it. Kansas City's advancing, and I really think the Niners advance. Also, if you're going to take the dog, take them to win the game. Like, take a money line. The outright winner owns a 33-10-1 against the spread record, which is 77% oh my God. in the last 44 divisional. So if you're going to take a dog to cover, take them to win. If not, take the winning margin on the other side. But just take their money line as well. Like, put a unit on, on the spread and then, you know, a half on the – or whatever you, I don't know how to use the size this exactly but it, it's it's easy if the Niners get to minus three there's no reason you should be laying a Cowboys plus three if they lose they by probably a field gonna goal, win the game if they lose by a field goal you got to push True. If, if they cover three points they're probably gonna win the game yeah so don't take any plus three spreads don't dear god don't take any plus two and a half spreads I don't <laughs> you know who I'm talking about man don't if your handicapper is telling you to take plus two and a half on a football spread, you need to stop listening to that handicap. I think we talked about this last week, too. It's absurd, it's ridiculous. Man. This is ridiculous. Who the fuck is taking a plus two and a half in football? In, in college basketball, in the NBA, is rough. I'll take points in those sports. But if you're telling people to take a two and a half point spread in the NFL, you're a fucking moron. Well, there's, Excuse a, my lo- there's a lot of people. T- yeah, that's, that is that is ridiculous. I would never take that. But in terms of the dogs, I mean— like Cincinnati, still finalizing my other dog that I like here. Don't think it's Jacksonville, so between the other two. Um, but it is BS that the NFL gave the Niners two and a half days of, or, of bucks or wherever it would have been um, on that schedule. They probably need to to change that there, but we should get some close games and some dogs for sure just based off historical um, trends here. And the league wants it to be close, right? Like they these games are going to be close. We got refs that... What's the last? Uh, what's the who's ref in the last game here? Vinovich and his crew call like the fewest penalties in the league. Vinovich is they don't notorious. call penalties. So who does that favor, Dallas or the Niners? Because they don't call penalties. San Francisco. I think that favors San Francisco, but Dallas, man, or uh, Dallas, Dallas is oof. This Niners Dallas game. This I want to watch this game. This is gonna be a good game. Well, you're not gonna be up for the noon Bengals Bills. You'll uh, be up, but you'll be hungover. Why? That's the noon game. Yeah, that sucks. Noon man. in Vegas. Why in the world is Buffalo Cincinnati not the prime time night? Because it's Dallas San Francisco. Oh, that's re- also remember Dallas and San Francisco played each other last year, and Dak did that stupid thing where he ran. Bad coaching, Bad lost them the coaching. game. They lost by six or seven at home. I rewatched that. Um, also, the NFL announcing. I'm sorry, but Fox is like number two. Joe Davis, whatever the hell his name is, is terrible. He's going to be on Saturday. And then Mike Tirico and, and uh, 
uh, Collinsworth. But Sunday, we got Jim Nance and Romo and, and Kevin Burkhardt, who's doing the Super Bowl with Olsen, I love. But come on, like, get a better Fox, get a better number two. Uh, CBS has Ian Eagle and Charles Davis. Like, I love Charles Davis. Well, it's going to be rough Saturday without him because Fox has all this crap this year. So they Who does have... Joe Buck work for? ESPN, they're out. Who wait, who's calling this game for Fox? The guys who called the the Seahawks Niners game. They stressed oh, me out. They fucking suck. they fucking they stressed me out during the game. Like I was like I need a soothing voice there, and I mean I miss <laughs> Al Michaels with uh, Collinsworth. Oh the the goat. I mean Mike Tirico went to Q's, love him, but yeah. And Tony Romo is over here like. I'm like, dude, let me just watch the fucking game. Like he's like, he's gonna run a sl- like because he, he played quarterback. He's breaking down the plays. He's like, you're, what you're gonna see is a coral route. You gotta middle, love his energy like, though. Before the fucking play, I'm like, dude, let me just watch the game, man. Can you just can you just commentate on it like a commentator? If you want to go coach, you can go coach the Chargers when they fire Brandon Staley's ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, I think Romo likes golfing a little too much to get in there and start coaching teams, but. Hey, I mean, that really sells it, right, for our divisional lanes here, what we're looking at, some great stats you guys put out there. Um, I think we just wrap things up here. Just some final words for this week. As our listeners know, we will be watching these games from Vegas. We'll be locked in at these sports books. Hell yeah. Again, using multiple sports books, trying to get the most value here, hedging, live betting if needed. But again, staying on top of these games and, again, providing – our clients with great value here. So again, just want to wrap it up real quick. Your final words for this divisional round. Swice, you start here first. Yeah, we've been preaching this book. Get on multiple books, please, for the love of God. Like, I'm seeing completely different lines, especially like FanDuel, honestly, I've seen the best odds. But generally speaking, like you need a line shop around, especially live and even pregame. You want to be saving, you know, not losing money off the books. So that's my tip for this weekend. Get on multiple books. Uh, use promotions that, that they have if you want to get free plays or you have your local book that you can get them on. But that's my suggestion. All right. I've got two things for you people. First of all, thank you guys so much for listening. First things first. If you're not in at least our free Telegram, what are you doing? <laughs> if you have Agreed. recently started sports betting in the last one to two years, Come join our free Telegram. It's in the link in all of our socials. They'll be tagged in the video description. And come hang out. Come ask questions. Come learn. It's a process. I got so many. I took all the arrows for you guys. You guys don't have to to suffer. We have definitely taken some arrows with these L's over the years, but you learn from everyone, and, and they learn. won't have to. You learn. You learn. Guys, if you want to learn about sports betting, click the link in the description. You can join our free Telegram. You can sign up for our premium picks. That's a great idea. And last thing, if anyone is able to bring forth evidence that Michael Bandy is a real person, I'll get a Michael Bandy jersey and I'll wear it on the Where, show. Where's your TCU tattoo? It's coming. Bro, it's a process. People T- are waiting. Tattoos are a process. Look, somebody can prove to me that Michael Bandy's a real person, I'll get a Michael Bandy jersey and I'll wear it on the show. Michael Bandy, if you're hearing this, prove that you're real, bro. He's probably watching. Prove you're not a Vegas operative. Love you guys. Thanks for watching. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thank you for listening, everyone. That covers episode two of the Make Vegas Pay podcast. If you enjoyed this and want more, subscribe to our YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter with the Make Vegas Pay handle. Thank you again for listening, and uh, check out our merch, too. Take care. Michael Bandy. Fuck.